My life is in your hands. My life is in your hands. You took control when I was young. When I was not able. My life is in your hands. My life is in your hands. You took control when I was young. When I was not able. Hi, welcome to Inspire Blessings with Dreamer Prince. I decided to make the St. James Day Fair. Um, episode into two parts because there were so many different guests that really wanted to share what was on their mind. So I hope you enjoy. Thank you. So my next guest is, what's your name? Chris. And uh, Chris Wallace. Chris Ballas. Thank you, Chris. I do appreciate this. Um, so the question that I've been asking today is, what is on your mind? I figured there's things going on in this world that there's got to be a lot of stuff on your mind so what would you say it's something that might be the biggest on your mind well uh, all the terrorist uh, threats all the uh, people are just going crazy it's everybody's fighting I mean they were always fighting in the Middle East but uh, it's just uh, you know I have a new grandson and and uh, what's the world gonna be like for him that's basically what I'm worried about you know I did my time already almost so um, you know, just the uh, fighting, and then we got, you know, my personal view of the uh, election coming up is that if we get Hillary in there, forget it. The world's going to be ten times worse. So, you know, do you vote for Donald Trump? You know, it's like the better of two evils. I like his ideas. He just le has to learn how to, you know, address the public a little differently. Well, you know, I know that most people say is that uh, voting for Hillary is a continuation of Obama. And if possibly worse, you know, because he set the stage for her to make it worse. Um, so the thing is, is that um, I think if you're listening to, um, to both candidates, you, you, got, you, you know, listen to the one that is more for the people rather than for themselves. And, you know what I mean? 100%. A hundred percent. Trump has great ideas. Everything that I'm thinking, he's saying, is just that it's the way you say it. You know, he's not polished. All right? Uh, the fact is that a president, when he's elected, he doesn't just go make these decisions on his own. He has advisors. You know, he has advisors. He, uh... He's told by different people the situations and what the best uh, action would be. So it would take time to polish him up a little, but that's the problem. Well, yeah, the thing is, is that you need to have the people around you that are going to give you the wisdom that, you know, that you are basing your, uh, what you're going to make your decisions on as well. You know what I'm saying? So, so for instance, he's, he's a Christian. And, um, you know, God gives people the wisdom to make the right decisions. And he, God even says, you know, uh, ask for the spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge, gift of understanding, and, and in the fact that he'll guide you in the directions. And so, um, you know, now, another thing is, is that people really aren't addressing, but her health is really very bad. Well, I think she's hiding something. However... When you think about going to flying to two different cities a day uh, and doing what she's doing and what Donald Trump is doing, I mean, it's exhausting. I was talking about that the other day. It was just uh, how do they, they have to be somewhat fit to be able to do that, you know? Right. But, they, but there's definitely secrets that uh, I've heard. Um, I don't want to really say right now, but yeah. So I know that people should really research it more about her health and whether or not she's going to be able to do what she's supposed to do because you're in a pressure that's called the biggest pressure you could ever be in and if you can't yeah. if you're not good, in good health to be able to to endure that you shouldn't even be running right. yeah she's holding she would be holding the key to the football if we know what we're talking about right. and um uh, i agree with you 100 percent but so thank you so much, Chris. I appreciate it. Yeah, enjoy this day. Okay. It's turned out to be such a hot day. I can't believe it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know.
So I got another young uh, guest here. I think it's good to get the perspective of, um, you know, the way I guess uh, the, the next generation is thinking. So what is your name? Gina. Gina what? Novalino. Okay. Thank you so much. So uh, Gina, what is on your mind? So I think my career has been on my mind a lot lately. Oh, sorry. Yeah, my career. Okay. Where I'm going to end up. Now, is there any kind of influences of what's, what you're seeing it is happening in politics and in the world that's kind of making you think, what should you do? Yes, because my major was public administration, so I learned a lot about the political system and how much Congress and senators have influence and lobbyists. And um, do you see that um, politicians that are right now, and I'm not going to say all of them, but there's a lot more than you'd like to think that are really thinking about their deep pocket, you know, when they're making their decision on whether they should veto a bill or not. And I just feel that it's uh, it's really hurting us as we the people. Absolutely, because look at uh, Myron Corporation with the EpiPen. You know, no one's stopping her from hiking those life-saving devices. So it, it is a big thing. Yeah, yeah it, it's a shame. Um, I just had... Um, a, g a gentleman who's actually the red, I think he calls himself the red life, red light, oh, I'm blanking out here, but anyway, where he fights the red light ticket systems. Oh, yes, um, Stephen Ruth. His yes, yes, so I had him, uh, I just interviewed him, and um, it's great, because he's also young as well, and he's fighting, and so that's what it is, is that if we can have more of the next generation going into politics seeing what is wrong out there and seeing that it's not about money but it's about what we should do for the people of our nation our state and so yeah definitely I would say continue on that path what position what uh, would you like to actually you know do um, I'm very interested in nonprofit emergency relief right now oh yeah I felt it um, yeah uh, disaster relief is a really big interest of mine right now now, um, FEMA, uh, outside contracting for that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Um. You know, you know the thing is, is that um, we see so much more devastation, so many more earthquakes happening, and uh, tsunamis and things like that. And uh, definitely, your services. I would have to say that they're probably looking for applicants. Yes, I heard that a lot of that is now being contracted out because of FEMA did not doing their job at, in the past disasters. So there's a lot of companies coming through and the government's contracting out. So they are hiring. It's a good thing to get into. Government's big now because there's a lot of people leaving soon. It's it's very old right now. So it's a very interesting path. You know what's a shame is, is that there was a... Uh, a politician that raised so much money for to helping the people of Haiti and it turned out that instead of giving it to them she kind of took it for herself without saying the name I'm sure most people can figure out who that was yeah um, that also happened in the country itself the uh, I guess I don't know if they have a president or I don't want to sound stupid but he he um, took all the money it's very corrupt over there so it is important to have nonprofits fighting for people like UNICEF and Oxfam and all those things are really important and I think everyone should donate to them because they really do make a difference you know I'm glad to see the fact that you actually have um, more of a deep thought than the average I hate to say kids yeah. you know teenagers they're just thinking about you know what's their next you know thing outfit that they should buy or, or Gucci pocketbook rather than really how do we help people well I think it's important to go to school for that reason alone I went to John Jay College and you get to be around people that you've never you, you break out of your shell and you get to learn so much so I think it's important to go to school for that reason as well as your education because you just you grow up while you're there right. so no, it's good. So keep on the right track and um, just ask and pray and, you know, ask God, where would you have me help your people? Yeah. You know, so thank you so much. Yeah, and you did a great job. <laughs> JeanMariePrince.com and CDBaby.com My life is in your hands. My life is in your hands. You took control when I was young, when I was not able. Jean Marie
jewelryprints.com and cdbaby.com. Okay, and my next guest is, what's your name? Dory Kreskis. Thank you so much. I appreciate this. Thank you. So my question I've been asking is, uh, what is on your mind? Uh, well, I own an anti-bullying organization called Dare to Dream, and it's dedicated to putting a stop in combating bullying of all types, combating it, so no child has to suffer. Okay. Now, why did you feel that it was important to uh, start an organization like that? Uh, I just started it in November 2015, and the reason I started it is because I was bullied as a child and also at a former workplace, and uh, I just felt it was important that no child should have to go through that. I, I live with the scars still. Well, you're not aware of, but God had blessed me to write a book called Inspired Blessings, Led by God to Inspire the World with Love, Faith, and Hope. And I actually talk about in there, because I was um, uh, adopted, and so in an American family, being the fact that I guess it was probably over 300, I don't know, 500 students, and being maybe the second or third Asian in school, I got made fun of that I, I that I hated myself I was prejudiced against my own race and I actually told my mother wanted to have an operation to look American so yeah bullying is very bad and as we know sometimes what happens is you hear about the school killings oh yeah well I'm also trying to create a law that would stop that and combat bully side I mean suicide brought on by bullying is so common there's an actual name for it it's called bully side and this law that I'm trying to create in New York City it already exist in Wisconsin. It would help uh, parents become more aware and it would actually teach parents to, um, they would have to pay a fine if their child is bullying another child more than twice to, to bring awareness. Yeah, no, it definitely, it, it starts with the parents. Yes, it does. You know what I'm saying? And uh, th sometimes, I hate to say, but um, kids uh, act like, you know, they, they see the what the parents are doing, so they don't think that it's wrong. So if the well, well, what I want to really teach kids is to celebrate your uniqueness and your differences and don't be ashamed of them and don't treat them like a scar. Your differences are what make you you. Yes. Thank you so much. I appreciate it and good luck. Thank you. Yeah, I thank you. So uh, I have another guest here as well. And your name is? My name is Liz Ramos. Thank you. I appreciate it, Liz. Um, the question I've been asking is uh, because the instability of this world, what is on your mind? Well, basically what's on my mind is more um, about God's children hearing God calling us to come closer to Him and whether we'll make light of it. You know, the thing is, is that um, we're supposed to be praying for our nation, praying for safety and things like that, but God is saying, you know, that we... It's his children who are supposed to be doing this because he doesn't expect the, the people that don't believe in him to be praying. Why should they be praying? But, you know, he says, what is if my people are called by my name and will humble themselves, then, you know, that he'll hear the prayer and then he will uh, heal their land. And uh, it's just a matter of are we doing that? I, I really uh, agree with that because what I be, I heard the Lord say that one day, you know, that came on my heart and that came on my mind that we as God people would humble ourselves and pray and turn from our wicked ways and he would heal our land because he's given us a place in his presence through the precious blood of Jesus and I, I believe that the Lord is calling us to draw near to him because unless he builds the house unless he does the work it's going to be done in vain so my what's on my heart a lot is I feel God calling us to that place of repentance. I, I feel God calling us to that place of prayer and to be in that place where He will put whatever He needs in us, you know, to let His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because I believe that God is going to speak through the church. He's going to make Himself known um, to many people that don't know Him through the church, through the ones that will come away with Him. You know, even Jesus came away. You know, even Moses came away, and he was the one that spoke to God face to face. And I really believe that, that God is calling the church to come away with him. You know what I've seen is that um, between Reverend Franklin Graham doing the Decision America tour, going to every state, 
So, you, you know, you see the brothers and sisters in Christ coming to those events and praying along with him. There's a lot of other different ministries that have also have been praying for our nation. So, I'm thinking that God, you know, with his grace and mercy, because uh, I believe it was a story with, with, uh, with Lot, you know, are well, you going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah if there were so many people, uh, you know, and so on? Was it with, with Lot or Abraham? But it definitely was Lot because I know it was some Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. And, and he said, you know, would you destroy would you destroy Sodom and Gomorrah if you had so many righteous people? And he kept on going down, you know, down in number. There is a, there is the remnant. And when you talk about counting in numbers, you can't count in numbers. I, I believe the brothers and sisters of Christ that have been praying around this nation and continues to pray. So I be, you know, believe by just that story of with Lot is that God, you know, that he would hear our prayer. God willing that he is hearing our prayer. And, you know, that he give us uh, his grace and mercy definitely at this time for not only our generation but our children's generation and grandchildren's generation yes you know I really believe if there's ever a word you know it's the word of grace like you said you know because it's by grace we're saved and I do believe that God has a remnant out there of people who have his heart you know and um, he's given a, a mission to you know to be his mouthpiece and and to speak to people and uh, you know but I, I really believe that you know that we have to be found in him when we do something in him in us because sometimes I guess there uh, there can be people that are moving religiously you know before God is ready to do something but I think as we wait on him and by his spirit we are moved into the position where God is going to do the work you know and and it, and it won't take much to do it because it'll be him doing it and I, but I, and I do see the Lord speaking I do see the Lord um, opening up doors that only he can open and positioning people in places where God has something to say and when he says it it's like he apprehends the hearts of people as he is moving well with my ministry what God has shown me is that there's nothing impossible you know because like uh, just the fact that having me write a book and and um, uh, doing a CD album I had no talent or any experience so just like with the other ministries that are out there he'll do the same as well yes amen thank you so much I do appreciate your time it was nice meeting you nice meeting you jeanmarieprince.com and cdbaby.com My life is in your hands My life is in your hands You took control when I was young When I was not able jeanmarieprince.com and cdbaby.com So my next guest is, what's your name? Donna Camparetto. Okay, Donna, thank you. Do you want to take your glasses off so people can see your eyes? Okay. So I've been asking you know, all day today, people, is um, what is on your mind, I guess, with all the things going on in this world? Mm -hmm. What's on my mind is our country and the condition that our country is in. And uh, I'm very concerned. As a Christian, I'm mostly concerned that um, we have a revival, which I pray for all the time, and that God blesses us and uh, helps us to be a better country because we all can use um, good leaders and uh, get back our values that we uh, once had, and uh, mostly uh, the Constitution. I'm really concerned about that. Yep. And out of the two candidates... Who do you think is more for the Constitution? Uh, honestly, I can't say I really know exactly what each of them thinks about the Constitution. They don't. I don't think I've heard them talk that much about it. Um, but um, hopefully, um, I'm in favor of Donald Trump right now because he has more conservative values, and also because he, his um, vice president choice is my. Uh, Mike Pence, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, they will 
honor the Constitution, and I'm praying for that. That's mostly what I do. Well, I'm basically also feeling that Donald Trump is for the Constitution. I believe that Donald Trump is more for we the people. He's really concerned for the citizens of the United States, you know. So uh, that is my concern, and uh, the values that we once held here in our country are so important, and people died to uh, preserve these values, and I think they're, that means something. It's really important. We should hold them sacred, and we should keep them. I know that uh, for the um, for the pastors out there, uh, he his first thing it was saying that he was going to uh, try to null and void the I believe the void is a 503C or something like that. Um, and because what it is is that the church, are, you know, the pastors are feeling that they're being held captive that they can't say what they want to say. You know, they don't have the freedom to say what they want to say because they're afraid that they're going to be, you know, getting their tax exempt status, I believe, uh, removed. Yeah. Well, um, God blessed us with liberty and freedom, and we're letting that go. We're uh, not valuing the, the freedom of speech. Um, uh, we won't be blessed if we try to uh, take that away from the people. And uh, it is a government for the people, n not a government uh, that controls the people and their freedoms. You know, the thing is, is that I just feel that a lot of people out there are just so um, consumed with the world, you know, whether it's shopping or whether it's video games or all these, all these different things, all these uh, addictions and influences on the negative end. Um, I happened to see an, um, ep something on YouTube where a reporter was just kind of walked around, and I believe it was in California, and asking the teenagers or the young people, like, what do you think of Sharia law? And they're like, yeah, I think it's a good thing. And, you know, and it's these females that are saying, and, but they have no idea what it is, because then he's asking them, do you, do you even know what, what it is? They're like, no. They're just thinking, oh, it's something that they heard, and it's just going with it, and rather than really understanding, you know, even like uh, socialism, you know, do you know what socialism is, you know, and, and things like that, where you, it, it allows the government then to take away your freedom. Um, well, that's why we have to be an educated people, and uh, when I was young, I didn't really, I was busy with other things, uh, but uh, I've been reading about, uh, you know, the uh, belief system in the uh, Quran and uh, also I read the Bible and um, you have to educate yourself you have to know what things are uh, what the uh, belief system is uh, behind any ideology and the best way to uh, know what to stand up for is to study your own country's constitution and also to for me as a Christian to read the Bible because God gives us direction, and that's why our forefathers, our ancestors, not all of them, but um, a lot of them treasured uh, the scriptures and left Europe and probably because they wanted the freedom to worship the way they wanted to and to... Um, uh, and, and I'm sure they value the scriptures. I think if we return to that, we're going to, um, ha our focus and our perspective is going to change and we'll be much healthier for it. I think it needs to really start with the parents though. You know what I mean? Because kids learn from their parents and if they see that the parents are just going with the world and the worldly ways, you know, what makes them think that that's not right? Well, we're only human, and our human nature is to uh, uh, choose our own will first, and uh, we're all prone to that, uh, Christians, non-Christians, everyone, uh, whatever background you're from, we're only human, but uh, that's why we need God, and that's why we need uh, to learn, again, the values that are important to families, to individuals, to families, and, you know, I pray for my country, I pray for my community, and... Um, I think if we all ask God to help us, um, no matter who you are, and we really mean it, we, it comes from our heart, I think he will help us and he'll help uh, our country. Thank you so much for your time and you did a great job. Thank you. Uh, I just want to thank you so much for joining us today at the St. James 
there and as you can see that there was a lot of um, thoughts on people's minds when I was asking them what is on your mind and um, maybe I'll be doing this at another place another time so um, also, I just want to let you know is that I'm going to be doing, I do speaking engagements, and you can also go into my website at jmarieprince.com, go to the events tab, and see the list of events, as well as I'd love to come to your place as well to be able to share my testimony, uh, you know, from my book, as well as uh, sing some songs from my CD album. I'm also looking to get 1,500 likes on my Inspired Blessings Facebook page, so if you could be able to like it. I would appreciate it and um, keep inspired blessings within arm's reach to help give you comfort when others are at a loss for words. Thank you and God bless. JeanMariePrince.com and CDBaby.com To accept and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please say this prayer. I know that I am a sinner who needs forgiveness. Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins and purify me. I know that you died and rose again to pay for my sins. I need you to be my Lord and Savior for the rest of my life. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. My life is in your hands, my life is in your hands. You took control when I was young, when I was not able. I had no mother to love me or a father to give me a hug. I was there. say